first of all, let's ignore all the difficult to play and non noob friendly heroes. So, no melee, ranged heroes only. This is because heroes with melee attacks require you to get right into the fight, get right up to your enemies. This makes running away more difficult. It means, for example, that you have to get right up to a tower before you can even do any damage. Thus making you take a much longer time to get out of its range. Ranged heroes, meanwhile, can stay at a distance and thus retreat before the enemy even gets close. Basically, melee heroes are easy targets and require more advanced play. Similarly, this is also true for abilities that require you to get in the middle of or next to enemies, or jump, or rush right next to them. These are more dangerous to use as they put you right in the middle of a fight instead of staying on the sidelines, as is the case with ranged heroes. Now, from the ranged heroes, it's all the better if they have group or area attack abilities to eliminate creeps quickly and easily. However, there's some that have overly complicated abilities. Don't go for heroes that spawn more units for you to use, you'll only get lost trying to control them. Likewise, don't go for support heroes. These typically have healing or other kinds of abilities intended to be cast on friendly allied heroes. This will needlessly split your attention between worrying about their health and mana in addition to your own. Avoid those and go for heroes with more passive abilities that do not have to be managed. This will let you focus more on paying attention to what's happening rather than which ability combo combination to use and whether or not it's still on cooldown or needs mana or whatever else. This way you can play to stay away, escape, take down towers. The enemy's top tower has fallen. Kill shot. And get minion gold through last hits without dying. Don't worry about getting hero kills until you can master these basic things. So here's the top 10 heroes that best meet those requirements and are thus the easiest to play. I'm done being merciful. Moonglaive is the main ability to be upgraded with Luna. It makes all your attacks bounce across to nearby enemies and even towers. Since this is a passive ability, all your regular attacks always hit the group automatically and without any use of mana. It even lets you get multiple simultaneous last hits. If you see an enemy hero nearby, hit them with your stunning and damaging Lucent Beam ability. Beware of using Eclipse, however, as it requires you to be in the middle of enemies for maximum effect. Since all your abilities are forward line attacks, the top tower is under attack. It's easy to remember how and when to use them. Unfortunately, they're not instantaneous and a short casting time means you can miss easily. As well as be vulnerable to attack. Use these abilities, especially dual breath, on groups of creeps. Try to aim it close rather than far so as to not start moving up near enemies. 
Use Ice Path to try and freeze enemy heroes if you can, and hope your team joins in attacking them. Make sure to level up the passive Liquid Fire ability and thus reduce its own cooldown. It automatically converts your regular attack into an area damaging fireball that uses no mana. Your bottom tower is under attack. Power pours into me. Use Earth Spike to damage groups of enemies as well as stunning them. This adds a layer of safety when enemy heroes are nearby, stopping their approach and letting you stay at a distance. If they do get close enough, use the Finger of Death ability for a simple and very high damage hit. Whenever safe and possible, use Mana Drain to recharge mana. Your middle tower is under attack. Avoid using it on enemy heroes, however, as it's then easy to be caught standing still, or they'll just run out of range anyways. Use it on ranged creeps instead, but be careful where you stand so as to not be attacked by melee creeps while doing so. A very simple way to play is by just constantly putting down plague wards. These act like turrets which automatically attack enemies. They can even get you last hits. While doing so, attack different creeps to spread the poison damage of your passive Poison Sting ability, which deals damage over time. If you can, throw Venomous Scale down a line of creeps when an enemy hero is near. But it's best to save that mana for Plague Wards instead. Venom's vengeance. My poison concentrates! Poison attack is the one ability you should be using the most with Viper. It applies poison to enemies and as it's leveled up, its cooldown goes to zero. Thus you can turn it on autocast as groups of creeps approach. Make sure to click through the creeps to apply poison to each of them and eliminate the group faster. Be sure to watch your mana as it can run out quickly while doing so with repeated groups. Meanwhile, Nether Toxin is the other ability you should be leveling up. It passively adds further damage to your attacks and does not use mana. Use Viper Strike against heroes whenever safe and possible. But aside from turning poison attack on and off, there isn't much else that needs doing. Faith. 
Arc Lightning is the main creep group attack ability for Zeus. Click on a target and all those surrounding it will also get hit. Including those well out of your range. Its very low cooldown means that you'll need lots of mana. Thus, it's good to mainly buy lots of mana and intelligence-focused items. Beware of your regular attacks short range, however, as it means you'll have to be dangerously close to towers and enemies. Use Lightning Bolt on enemy heroes. And Thunder God's Wrath when they're trying to run away, as it automatically hits all heroes across the whole map. Temperature rising! Two area attack abilities make creep damage easy. The first Dragon Slave burns through enemies in a wide and easy to aim forward line. The second, Light Strike, does the same but to a smaller, selectable area. Both of these can be used in conjunction in order to very quickly destroy a creep wave and get multiple last hits. Both have low cooldowns however, meaning that watching your mana is necessary. Lastly, use Laguna Blade for striking at nearby heroes. My bow is strong. Two passive abilities are the main focus here. Precision Aura increases damage of nearby friendly creeps, while Marksmanship increases your agility attribute. This, in turn, increases the damage of your attacks. To further increase this stat, buy more agility-focused items. And that's it, just stay back and shoot the creeps without worrying about mana. If you see an enemy hero coming at you, turn on frost arrows and use silence, then run away unless your team joins the fight. My death draws near. Use crypt swarm against creep groups as they approach. Its wide area of effect makes it easy to aim and can get your last hits easily. Its low cooldown, however, means that it can use up mana quickly. Thus, also level up the passive Witchcraft ability, which reduces the mana needed to cast Crypt Swarm. Keep the exorcism ability ready for when a low health enemy hero wanders near along with a creep group for a chance to eliminate them all. Since it lasts 30 seconds, it's also good to use for pushing ahead and using its damaging effect on two waves of creeps. the longest attack range in the game, Sniper is the safest to play hero. With two passive abilities, one of which grants range that's even beyond that of towers, which makes it all the easier to stay alive. Use and level up the shrapnel ability for area damage against creeps while standing back and picking them off for last hit gold.
pick off heroes with the assassinate ability, which has rather low cooldown for such a high damage, long range and easy to aim ability. Spotted. 